Good afternoon and uh, thank you for asking me to come and give this short presentation on our project. This is a small part of a EU project, but I'm going to present on the impact of COVID-19 on healthcare teaching and learning and on the Delphi study. My name is Professor Leslie Dyack. I am a CAPE Fellow and I'm also the working group convener for interprofessional education for the International Network for Health Workforce Education. And this is a project that is funded by the EU Erasmus programme. And in the box on this page, you'll see the names of the different partners who are involved in the project. It is a pan-European project and we're involved in um, a project called Humanising Interprofessional Healthcare Education through the Use of Storytelling. The project started in September 2019 and will finish in September 2021. And the outcome of the project is to develop training materials and train the trainer events to, to um, develop, to disseminate the training materials. The project is developed and divided into five stages. The first stage is a concept analysis uh, where we looked at humanism, interprofessionalism and storytelling. Stage two were scoping literature reviews of the three topics and stage three that I'm going to refer to a small part of today is the Delphi study. Stage four and stage five, which we're going to do, carry on and do in the second year of the project, are developing the materials and the train the trainer events. The first three stages have all been completed and are now available on the website. And I'll give you the website address at the end of this presentation. The Delphi study was undertaken over the summer, July and August. And the purpose of a Delphi study is to develop consensus on topics that you would like to understand what people feel about them and that you are gaining a consensus on what they would like to do. And what we wanted to do as part of the project was after the concept analysis and the literature reviews was to discover what healthcare education, educationalists, policy stakeholders and students would wish in any training materials looking at humanism, interprofessional healthcare education and storytelling. And the Delphi study was very much to create a roadmap for us for year two of the project. And we feel that that has happened um, very much so and gives us a good steer into the second year of the project. The Delphi study, as I say, was undertaken over the summer and therefore was undertaken during the period of COVID and meant that uh, we had more issues than we might normally have. This project um, had to go completely online from the middle of March trips to a number of countries have had to be put on hold or cancelled and all the meetings have been held online. We've had one face-to-face -face meeting which was last October but many of us have not met the others so it makes it for a very complex and uh, intriguing project but one that has been very successful so far in that we've managed to deliver so much of the materials. As you can see from this map, the participants within the Delphi study came from all over the world. Most of them came from Europe, where the project is based, but we did have responses from Africa, Asia, Australia, North America and South America. And although we only had 156 responses for the survey, it did give us a lot of very good and rich information. 
Um, there were questions to help us develop consensus, but also questions where we allowed the participants to give us qualitative comments. And that um, has been immensely rich. Over 83% of our participants gave us comments for a number of the questions. Consensus, we decided, would be at 70%. And we were expecting to have a stage two and perhaps even a stage three part of the Delphi study. But in fact, by the end of stage one, we discovered we had consensus for most of the topics and felt that it would be not in the best interest to carry on and do a stage two survey when we already had such a high degree of consensus from people. And during the COVID epidemic, people did not want to be bothered by a lot of questionnaires asking very similar things. And we felt having got consensus in the first round for most topics, it was not a good idea to carry on. What I really want to talk about and focus on in this uh, presentation is the impact of COVID-19 on healthcare, education, teaching and learning, and what the Delphi study told us. Now, these were the four statements that we gave our participants, and we asked them to use a five-point Likert scale from strongly agree to disagree um, or strongly disagree. And then we have merged the agree and strongly agree and the disagree or strongly disagree. And you can see here that 90, over 95% of the participants felt that the pandemic had changed teaching and learning and that 70% had changed, felt that it had changed how they view their teaching and learning. Now, we weren't able to drill down into that uh, as that was not really part of the remit of the study, but the, some of the qualitative comments that I'm going to talk about in the next slide let you see how the change in the view has happened. The, go, the pandemic hasn't changed anything. Well, nearly 88% felt that it had, and the 61.5% felt that it was more important to teach humanising healthcare now because of the pandemic, although 36% were neutral on this. But we still felt that it gave us uh, a mandate to do some teaching with humanising healthcare. Now, when we asked for qualitative comments on COVID-19, 53% of our respondents took part. And I've just given you a few, a bit of the bite size comments that we had. A lot of the staff felt that there were positive and negatives to moving online. Positive because they had already been doing it, so they had a lot of material, and negative because there were things that they couldn't teach online or hadn't been taught online, and that created a, lot, a major impact on staff workloads. And for them, this all happened very quickly. There was no time to develop materials, no time to put things in perhaps a better pedagogical manner. So the, they were putting material online without really getting a chance to develop what they thought would have been good um, educational material. But staff also felt that it gave them a degree of flexibility in how they taught and when they taught. And they also mentioned the challenge of trying to develop materials for topics that they hadn't previously taught. And they thought this would be a useful and could be a useful way to stretch them and challenge them um, in developing new educational tools. For the students, there was a negative impact on the university experience, a lack of face-to-face -face teaching, um, which they felt created a disconnect and a little bit of lack of motivation. There were also technical issues for the students with lack of broadband width, and they wondered about the lack of practical teaching. But many of them liked the flexibility and appreciated what they were being offered. 
The website address is here if you're interested. And if any of you have any questions about the topic, would like to find out more, please contact me at h.l.diet at rgu.ac.uk.